So I'm going to read this article here. It is called The Effects of Microwaves on the Trees and Other Plants by Alfonso Balmori Martinez from December 2003, almost 20 years ago. I'm going to shut the camera off because I cannot hold the camera and point it here onto the screen and read at the same time. Hang on. So, plants and electromagnetic fields. In several germination laboratory experiments, experiments, placing seeds into a static magnetic field has been shown to increase the speed and the number of germinations. In growth experiments, it has been proven that the exposed plants develop larger longitude and weight. In a study realized under a high power line between Austria and the Czech Republic, the effect on wheat and corn crops was assessed. The results indicated a 7% reduction in the production of wheat in the fields next to the electric line during the five years that the investigation lasted. A stimulating effect on the growth and development of plants subjected to static magnetic fields is usually corroborated, whereas inhibitory effect action can occur in the case of variable magnetic fields. Effects in calcium balance in meristem cells of pea roots subjected to magnetic fields were observed. Another study realized with microwaves also showed a long-term drop in calcium and sulfur levels in leaves of beech trees directly related with the power of the broadcast radiation. In animal cells, the same thing has been proven. Microwaves can affect the intercellular communication, which can affect the functioning of the calcium channels. Will that occur with trees? In the area that received the radiation of Skrunda radio location station in Latvia, the radial growth of pine trees decreased. This did not happen beyond the area of incidence of the electromagnetic waves. A negative statistically st significant correlation was also proven between the relative additional increment of the trees and the intensity of the electromagnetic field, and it was confirmed that the beginning of this decrease in growth coincided with the start of radar operation. I'm going to interrupt this reading. Radar is a palindrome, same backwards as forwards. Ra is the Egyptian sun god. Here we have Rod, R, Rod, R, forwards and backwards. Ra, Ra. Is this a coincidence? The effects of many other environmental and anthropogenic factors were evaluated, but no significant effects on the tree growth were observed. In a study carried out at the same time on the cellular ultrastructure of needles of irradiated pines, the following was observed. An acceleration of the production of resin, a promotion of the senescence of the trees, and a decrease in seeds germination from pines most exposed to the electromagnetic fields. Radar is a device that is looking for objects in the atmosphere. Considering that radar is a palindrome and we have Ra Ra, which is the Egyptian sun god, forwards and backwards, and we know that the the son of the Egyptian sun god was Horus, we could deduce that what they are looking for are signs of the wrath of God impending. Continue reading. The trees near to an antenna located in a forest of Michigan have grown very quickly since the mast was installed in 1986. Forestry researchers attribute the extra growth to the magnetic fields around the antenna. 
It seems that each species react in a different way. They did not seem to affect the northern red oaks, neither the paper birches, but red pines near the antenna grew taller than red pines at the distant site. White aspen and red maples grew thicker than their counterparts further off. These observations suggested that the electromagnetic fields have a subtle influence on the forest. In Oruhia, New Zealand, the trees have been dying where the main beams were, were directed to in places that receive the waves of a powerful radio antenna. They seem to be most vulnerable when they have their roots in water or when they were near the river. In the points with higher levels of electromagnetic radiation, the trees were affected or they were dead. In the frontier along the former border between the FRG and the GDR, this is Germany, numerous radars were placed for espionage mission during the Cold War. Who are these people really spying on with their radars? Cold War? Now what have we got? Now we've got global war. Ming. You see what happened here was they realized the atmosphere was getting colder and in order to combat the will of God they erected all of these radars all of these antennas and woofers and other tweeters to produce electromagnetic waves in the atmosphere. The areas with the damaged forests almost always co coincided with the surface swept by the microwaves. Immediately after the spying installations that were working during two or three decades have been powered down, a notorious recovery of the forest took place. In those areas, conventional contamination didn't exist. In Canada, the, radio, the radars also had devastating effects in the near forests. In Switzerland, the trees located near a great transmitter grew in such a way that it seemed that they escaped from the waves. This was a curious observation, and it was also described by Dr. Hertel. It is important to point out that the radiation, radiations that were investigated in these studies were pulsed microwave radiation with characteristics very similar to the modern communication systems. Telephones without cables, cell towers, and this is what you can feel when you're outside. The heat comes down in waves, and it often is attached to the legs for some reason. Possible explanations. The trees are particularly sensitive and react to environmental changes. Some European scientists are convinced that acid rain is not the sole cause of this new type of forest damage that has desolated big areas in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, <clears throat> and that there are other additional culprits, among them the electromagnetic fields of microwaves. Humanity has known electromagnetic waves for over a century but they have not been used extensively in technical applications until World War II. Which also involved and invoked mass murder on the children of Jacob, in particular on the children of Ephraim and Manasseh and Judah. Over the last 30 years, transmission density has doubled every four years, and the electromagnetic contamination has gone up around 100 times. This was in 2003. Imagine what it is now. This was cutting edge in 2003. We have now entered the microwave era, where we are dealing with minuscule dimensions. Our environment is polluted with much waste in the form of dangerous electromagnetic radiation. Today, trees and other biological systems are being subjected to dangerous 
higher microwave radiation, several billion times higher than naturally occurring, which interfere with living information systems and cause slow but relentless effects on living matter. In some regions where the air is clean, the floor that is under the trees remains acid in spite of the absence of chemical precipitation. Does some other process that could cause changes in the balance of ions exist? The answer is positive. For example, the electrolysis. This requires that in the soil exists an electric current which creates ion movements through the depositing of electrons on water-soluble minerals suspended in solution. Wolfgang Volkroth investigated the damages caused by radars on the German forests during many years and he checked that the areas with high microwave levels exhibited serious forest damages and this was in 1988 and in 1991. The microwaves are certainly one of the many harmful factors but we don't know the full extent of its magnitude. They cause the cellular membranes of trees to resonate and thereby interrupt the water circulation. The balance of electrically charged particles is also distorted. The short waves are those that cause the most damage to trees. Folkholt, 1988 and 1991. It is possible that microwaves are received by the trees and finally converted into electric current that flows toward the ground. Already in 1987, the renowned forest biologist Professor Hutterman, 1987, made the following statement. There can be no doubt that electromagnetic waves are received by trees and their needles. Although they are not optimal conductors, it can be demonstrated by means of simple experiments that the leaves absorb the waves by resonance and that this process causes the induction of a flow of electrically charged particles in the needles and leaves. Continuing with the Falkhold theory, the induced charged characters, carriers finally migrate to the ground and the direct current that spreads from the roots into the soils cause a kind of electrolysis. This leads to the soil acidification repeatedly observed under the trees that exhibit this new type of damage. In the ground, a change occurs in the ionic balance, acidification. It disturbs the mineral management of the affected trees and also retards the activity of soil organisms. However, the comprehensive scientific evaluation would require long-term studies since the fragmentary investigation is insufficient. According to this author, the high compensatory, sorry, compensatory payments to people and forest estates damaged by the influence of the microwaves avoided that the investigations continued. Did you get that? According to this author, high payments to the people and the forest estates damaged by the influence of the microwaves avoided that the investigations were continued. Money cannot buy fresh air or unpolluted water. Money is alchemical and soon it will disappear abracadabra. So continuing, according to the Swiss investigator Ulrich Hertel, there is a perfectly established proof of a causal chain of electrical smog, stunted growth, damage to soil, dying trees. Yet the official science ignores it. Yet the official science ignores it. The increasing contamination of our environment with technological poisons, such as radiation, is especially pernicious. 
It exposes the environment to a constant stream of considerably higher and more dangerous frequency, and this virtually without a pause. The slow process of death has begun. There are always certain trees which, due to their location or to their constitution, are less exposed to the damaging influences of microwaves or are able to put up more resistance than others. You see, these trees are alive and they are beings and they are putting up a resistance just like we are against this perversion. In the near forest to these radars, the trees grow on the hills and mountains are condemned. They are generally thin, lean, or have withered tops. The most protected sector still has intact trees. The microwaves act slowly on the soil, on plants, and on water. Under their influence, the structure of all organic components has to disintegrate. This is what I have been talking about. Alchemy, iron into clay, and heated up. Disintegration of creation. Today, all life cycles in nature are being badly damaged by technological radiation. What is technology other than the knowledge of how to destroy creation? The deconstruction of the construction that God made. The internal destruction of the soil also interferes with the growth of the young forest. The delicate feeder hair roots here are missing. The trees are standing in water and yet die of thirst. What have we been saying? Mercury acts as water. The destruction of the electrical potential differentiation, both in the water and in the tree, prevents the capillary's ability to pull the water upward in the circulation system from above. For this reason, the flow of sap ha is slowed and gradually ceases completely. The tree begins to wither from top down. Branches lose their needles and become thin. Trees grow transparent. Their color also changes. Natural electromagnetic relationships form the basis of all cycles in nature. Natural is the key word here. The construction and preservation of these relationships is only possible due to natural energy and their destruction takes place because of energy emanating from the technological unnatural energy according to Hertel, H-E-R-T-E-L, 1991. 30 years ago. Near observations in space and time. For some years, a progression, a progressive deterioration on trees, especially near phone masts in cities, has been observed. We still don't have systemized observations, but in Valladolid, Spain, Trees located inside the main lobe beam show a sad and feeble aspect, possible delays in growth, and possibly a high susceptibility to illnesses and plagues for lack of oxygen, in parentheses. My comment. In places where we have measured higher radiation levels, the trees show a more notorious deterioration. The trees don't grow above the height of the other ones, and those that stand out have withered tops. We have observed that the white and black poplars and the willows are more sensitive, although we ignore if a special susceptibility of this family exists, or if it can be due to their ecological characteristics that force them to always live near the water and this favors the electric conductivity. Other species 
such as Plantus sp and Lingustrum japonicum have shown to be more resistant. The necessity for prevention, monitoring, and control. Fifteen years ago, Wolfgang Volkroth wrote with ingenuousness, The future looks brighter. By the year 2100, communications transmissions will be achieved through a national network of modulated optic fiber conductor cables. He wrote this in 1988. After that, the surfeit of microwave transmitters, in particular directional transmitters, will no longer be necessary. He wanted fervently that the damage to the environment with dangerous electromagnetic radiation of microwave ceases, and at the same time made a warning on the urgency of giving up the use of this technology. Their forecasts, although very deliberate, was very mistaken. It should be were here. This is written by somebody whose native language is not English, and I'm not able to correct it as I go along in every case. Parallel to the optic fiber, the expansion of wireless communication, GSM, DCS, UMTS, VLAN, in the last years has been explosive. In a less innocent way, this author already noticed the powerful interests of the industry and their intents to avoid that this would be investigated. In other occasions, the industry did finance studies to avoid publications. See how that works? Or they just come out with diatribes or diatribes against so-called conspiracy theorists. In other occasions, or 